The Umbrella Academy is back and they're in a whole new timeline. The lovable losers are facing off against the Sparrow Academy, whose ranks include a reverse punching bag, an LSD spitting misfit, and a literal floating cube. All 10 episodes are out now and I'm here to take a look at some of the fun details, foreshadowing, Easter eggs, and references you may have missed. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Welcome to the Hotel Oblivion, where you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Ask your parents what that's a reference to. The massive spectral hotel exists in a nether realm attached to its real world sibling, the Hotel Obsidian. Both locations serve as mirror copies of each other. While the Buffalo Room is the obvious example of this, featuring a head on one side and a butt on the other, there are far more subtle details about how these two places are the antithesis of each other. The Obsidian features southwestern inspired influences with a big emphasis on the Wild West. When Klaus leads his family into their new hideout, he's wearing a cowboy hat. A quick pan of the room also features two other guests wearing similar round brimmed hats. The Oblivion features a far more Japanese aesthetic with its sushi bar and samurai guards. Hey, while we're talking about the mysterious hotel, this season wears some of its influences on its sleeve, and none is more clear than its connection to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Several rooms feature a color swap wallpaper of the famous Overlook Hotel carpeting. This pattern has been featured all throughout pop culture in some pretty unexpected places. Recently, it was seen in the video game Misfire 12 Minutes, but it was also in the Pixar classic Toy Story. That's not the only connection to The Shining either. The White Buffalo Suite is the whole reason that Sir Reginald built the Obsidian in the first place. It's the mysterious room that exists to serve as a bridge to the Oblivion and the universe reset thingamawhatever. It's been sealed off for years according to the mid-80s aesthetic. Its introduction shares a lot in common with the evil room 237 in The Shining. Fun fact, it was originally 217 in the Stephen King book, but the hotel the movie was filming at made them change it to the non-existent room number. It is not a secret hint about how Stanley Kubrick filmed the moon landing. Klaus and Stanley are ripping down the hotel hallway on a cleaning cart, much the same way little Danny rode his big wheel. Both characters stop at the forbidden room and promptly enter it against the wishes of management. Danny Torrance encounters a naked ghoul, and Klaus gets shot with a spear gun. I'm not sure who comes out on top of that one. I have to admit, this season had me at Footloose. The Kenny Loggins Jam is also the namesake of the 1984 hit film starring Kevin Bacon's flared nostrils. When baby Jessica Jones spits a nasty glob in Diego's face, he hallucinates an incredible dance-off. Many of the dance moves and shots are taken directly from the film, including the circle dance-off and Christopher's sudden use as a disco ball. There's also a ton of foreshadowing in this sequence as Luther and Sloan quickly pair off, as do Ben and Klaus, and Marcus and Victor. In fact, the Sparrow Academy serves as a dark mirror to the Umbrella Academy. Mirror images are a big theme this season. Let's break that down a little further. Starting with the obvious, Sloan and Luther. These two are both initially dismissed and belittled by their families for their optimistic and arguably naive attitudes. Both also serve as the little heated moral core of their respective academies. It's obvious why these two fell in love, as they are the pair that has the most in common. These two have a less obvious connection, but Alfonso is a physical manifestation of what is happening internally to Allison. As a result of Five's time travel shenanigans and Victor's child abandonment, poor Allison has lost both her daughter and husband to non-existence. That's rough, buddy. As the season progresses, her pain and anger begin to lash out and result in the death of Harlan and the near destruction of both her family and all of existence. Alfonso mirrors this with his power set. Any physical damage done to him is returned on the attacker. What you do to him, he does back to you. This is what Allison is doing to Victor when she betrays Harlan. Of course, Alfonso isn't immune to damage. The more he uses his powers, the more he deteriorates until pieces fall off his face. The pain Allison is causing is also taking its toll on her as a person. Outside versus inside. More mirror images. How about we step away from heady metaphors for a bit and talk about Klaus bouncing off cars like he's drunk playing Frogger. 
Papa Reginald is back at it again, training Klaus to resurrect faster and faster by having him dance in traffic. While extremely funny and oddly heartwarming, this scene presented a logical problem for me. Is no one stopping to help the man they just run over? Presumably there's a bunch of unfilmed scenes of Reginald cutting check after check. Well, no, and the reason is because everybody is too busy running for their lives. As revealed later in the episode, the Kugelblitz has reduced the city to cinders. This is causing a mass exodus of survivors desperately trying to avoid being disintegrated. That's why the bus didn't even slow down when there was a man clearly standing at the stop. Let's talk about the Kugelblitz and how it works. It's the result of a massive grandfather paradox. Since Harlan dispatched the Umbrella Academy before they were born, Victor was never thrown back in time to transfer his powers to Harlan. Ergo, Harlan would have no powers to have dispatched the Umbrella. You see where this is going. This creates the Blitz, which begins erasing everything in pulses. And it's starting with the newest life first. The Pug, the Lobsters, and other younger beings go first. Then onto Cows and Newsstand Attendants. Finally, the old Concierge. But what about Stanley? He is erased way after everyone else. We learn he's not actually Diego's kid, and Lila borrowed him from a girlfriend. That girlfriend was in 1989. Lila brought Stanley 33 years into the future. He's 12 in 1989, so according to the rules of the universe, Stanley is now a 45-year-old man. He and number five kind of have that in common. They should get a drink about it. Just not at that one diner. You know, now that I mentioned him, we should talk about the wonderful British Canadian legendary that guy, Julian Richings. The ghostly and ever quiet hotel manager is played by the storied actor, who I'm certain you've seen before, even if you can't quite place him. He has appeared in over 50 films and 20 television series. Supernatural fans would know him very well as the physical embodiment of death. He's also been in Canadian horror classic Cube and Zack Snyder's Man of Steel. Needless to say, Richings has deep connections to both the horror genre and Canadian-based productions. Umbrella Academy often falls into both categories. He's always a welcome addition to a show or movie, and that's good because he's in most of them. Let's talk about the giant ball of universe-destroying energy with a funny name. The Kugel Blitz is represented as a miniature sun burning away in the basement of the Academy. It's very similar to the artificial sun created by Doc Ock in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. Both threaten to suck in the entire city and grow exponentially. If only Doc Ock had a powerful cube boy on his side. Look out everyone, Mom has found God, and he's in the basement. Upon discovering the spatial anomaly, she begins to worship it as the embodiment of God. In this way, she shares a connection to the antagonist of the 2007 Danny Boyle adventure, Sunshine. In the film, the captain of the Icarus One also goes cuckoo for God, whom he also believes is hiding in the sun. Both attempt to burn their targets alive for perceived slights against their lords. There's nothing I love more than a good character arc. Well, maybe the doof warrior from Fury Road. He should be in more things. When we were first introduced to the crew, they all loved to dance, but did so in separate rooms of their large manor. It represented how separate and yet connected they were. And here we are three seasons later, and the Academy is still dancing, but now far more with each other. Diego's Footloose fantasy has them all working together as a single unit, a fulfillment of his deepest desire. The early victory celebration and the bachelor party also have some members dancing together. Not everyone is in a place where they're ready to, but it's another sign of progress amongst the siblings. So it turns out that Sir Reginald Hargreaves has a lot in common with another super scientist. The ultimate plan to save the universe relies on having a group of specific individuals stand on a series of symbols to close a tear in reality and restore a broken universe. Where have I seen that before? While not exactly like Gravity Falls, it is still fairly influenced by the climax of the iconic cartoon. In both cases, it doesn't go as planned. Gravity Falls and Umbrella Academy share similar themes of siblings and family bonds, so it's an apt comparison. 
Now, if only we could get a season three of Gravity Falls. There's also another reference to a horror master with the Hotel Oblivion. It shares a lot of features with the mysterious Black Lodge and David Lynch's Twin Peaks. This spirit realm is the place series protagonist Agent Cooper enters in his dreams. He has provided clues and insight into his investigation until the Lodge traps him in an endless series of hallways that cycle back to the same red room. The Umbrellas encounter a very similar situation when the hotel begins to cut them off from each other through an endless cycle of hallways. The Hotel Oblivion also contains a very similar checkered floor as the Black Lodge, though this one descends into a cubert like 3D illusion. In the second to last episode, complete annihilation seems unavoidable for our heroes, until they escape into the other realm of the Hotel Oblivion. Not necessarily to safety, mind you. All of reality is erased just as Klaus heroically impales himself on a buffalo. For the first time in the series, the screen fades to white, not black. Why white? Well, there are lots of thematic and metaphorical reasons, but the simple answer is based on what white and black actually are. Black is the complete oversaturation of the color spectrum, and white is its complete absence. White is the true shade of complete oblivion. It's pure nothingness. Kind of like Marcus's impact on this season. So if God is in the basement, where is the devil? The first time the Umbrella Academy comes face to face with their Sparrow counterparts, there's a very quick shot that contains some potential foreshadowing. The main hall of the Academy is flanked on either side by a pair of large antlers. One brief moment has Marcus standing under them, ominously giving the team's leader a pair of large Satan-like horns. It happens just after the birth of the Kugelblitz, aka God, at least according to Mom. The Devil Above and God Below, another twisted mirror of the Umbrella's own world. In the original timeline, Ben, the tentacle-wielding member, was tragically lost at a young age. It was the catalyst for the siblings giving up on the Academy and leaving their hero ways behind them. Except maybe Diego. The event where Ben died is referred to as the Jennifer Incident in hushed tones. Who is Jennifer and what happened has never fully been explained. There's a fresh clue this season when Victor hangs out in Ben's room after a confrontation with Allison. He takes note of a drawing of a woman named Jennifer. Did this girl cause Ben's death in the original timeline? It seems that things went very differently in this world. Season 4 may cycle back to this now that Ben is alive again and living a normal life in South Korea. We may run into Jennifer soon enough. Actually, when we last see Ben on a train in South Korea, Next to him is a distinctive QR code, which thanks to Moon Knight, is all the rage these days. This one, however, does not go to a free comic book, but rather an ominous website. UmbrellaAcademyNetflix.com is a website for Pogo's Tattoo Shop. The only link on the site goes to a selection of show-specific tattoos, including symbols for the Umbrellas and the Sparrows, as well as the Universe Machine and the Hotel Bell. It's a good thing they put the code at the end of the series as it's a little spoilery, especially with regards to Pogo's third season reveal. That ape can cut a good set of ink. Another movie reference recreating an iconic scene. Klaus is off to find his birth mother and he's very surprised to learn that he is a natural born Mennonite. That is, if he was born in this universe, which he wasn't. The Amish men aren't too happy to have him poking around and when they find him talking to one of their members in the woods, they chase him all the way back to his car. The shot of him cresting the hill, chased by a horde of Amish, is an exact recreation of this shot from the seminal film, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Unlike Indy, the only snake Klaus has to watch out for is his dad. Victor begins his transition with a dramatic haircut, but there are more subtle details. At the start of the episode, Elliot Page has more traditional feminine stage makeup applied. This removes things like imperfections and unnecessary definition, creating a softer face. Over the course of the episode, the makeup is slowly reduced and changed to a more traditionally male complexion. He's still wearing makeup, but you should know, viewer, so is every single man you will ever see in movies and TV. Transition is hardly this easy in real life, but it's great of the showrunners to include these steps. 
Season 3 started and ended with a bang, and once again the whole universe has been pulled out from under our heroes. Allison and Reginald got what they wanted in the end, but at what cost will it come to the rest of the Umbrellas? They have been depowered and now exist in a world dominated by their alien overlord of a father. Where do they go from here? I'm looking forward to Season 4 and the Umbrellas return, hopefully with even more dancing. <laughs>